Today we have another encounter with the feral people that are rumored to live in the various national parks across the United States, particularly the Great Smoky Mountains. While most of these encounters are very similar in nature, involving these people stalking and harassing hikers, this one is completely different and it's absolutely terrifying. It'll leave you with lots of questions on what else these people are capable of, what else they may be responsible for, and if you stick around till the end of the video, you'll see why. But before we get into today's encounter, if you've had an encounter with anything you would like to have shared on the show, please email me at the link below. And if you like today's story, please gently slap that like button. And the next time you're going quadding through the Great Smoky Mountains and you're loading all your gear on the back of the quad, strap that subscribe button down so you don't miss out on any future content. Now, let's get into today's encounter. Growing up, Trent was a very quiet kid. He grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee, and through the early years of school, he really did not have a whole lot of friends, but he did have a undying love and passion for motorsports. He loved dirt biking and ATVing, and in the early years of high school, that's how he ended up meeting his two best friends that have now been his lifelong best friends, Jace and Tommy. These guys, once they met each other, they were inseparable. Every weekend, they would be out dirt biking or quadding when they were doing that they were just hanging out i mean these guys were just completely inseparable almost like brothers and always had each other's backs in june of 2001 the three of them they were 22 years old and they needed a weekend escape they just needed to get away from everyday life so they decided that they would go spend a weekend dirt biking up in the appalachian mountains they would camp out of their truck and they would dirt bike during the day and they would just relax and let loose in the evenings the three of them though they did not want to go anywhere they had ever been before they spent lots of time dirt biking and quadding together so they pulled out a map started trying to figure out where they were going to go and they settled on a location northwest of chattaloochee right on the northeastern side of the great smoky mountains and cherokee national forest a couple of days before they left on their trip trent took his dirt bike out just for an evening joyride and he ended up blowing the motor on his dirt bike, so he was not able to take his dirt bike on this trip. But he figured, you know what, I have my quad. Yeah, my buddies are taking their dirt bikes, but you know what, I'll take my quad. At least I'll still have fun. I'll still be able to go on this trip. So on the Friday night, he loaded his quad up into the back of his truck, made the drive over to Jace's place. Jace and Tommy were riding out of Jace's truck, and the three of them made the almost two-hour drive to the location where they would be spending the weekend. As they made their way down the highway closer towards where they were gonna go, they spotted this old service road coming off the highway, going off into the mountains. They pulled their trucks down this road. They drove for about a mile and a half, two miles. They pulled over to the side and that's where they were gonna spend their first night. It was fairly late in the day at this point already. So the three of them, they decided, you know what? We're not gonna do any quadding or dirt biking today. And they figured they would just spend the evening basically in this location. So they took all their gear out of their truck. Jace had brought along a portable fire pit. They set it up. They gathered some firewood, made a fire. And the three of them that evening, they just sat around the fire, had a couple of beers, and just enjoyed each other's company. The three of them, they woke up the next morning ready to enjoy a day riding the trails, blazing their own trails through the mountains. So they started gathering up everything that they would need for the day. They always brought the same things with them. Each man would carry his own pack with food, with water, basic tools to make repairs to their equipment on the trail should anything happen. First aid kits. Jace, however, he always brought his 45 with him. It didn't matter where they went, he always had a sidearm on him. So the three of them, they got all their gear ready, hopped on their machines, Jace and Tommy on their dirt bikes, Trent on his quad, and they took off for a day riding the trails. They rode for several hours and Trent was finding it very hard to keep up with Jace and Tommy because they were on dirt bikes, he was on a quad, so they were having a way easier time navigating the different obstacles of this trail. Where Trent kind of had the advantage over Jace and Tommy was where they would come across an area that was completely muddy, like a boggy spot. He'd be able to traverse that a lot easier on his quad than Jace and Tommy could on their dirt bikes. But for that morning's ride, Jace and Tommy were significantly further ahead 
of Trent on that ride. Come around 12 o'clock, the three of them, they decided that they would break, have some lunch, have a couple of drinks, and just kind of relax a little bit and prep to be able to head back towards camp. And they found a spot on the side of this one mountain with this little bit of an outcropping that overlooked just this absolutely beautiful, almost endless expanse of wilderness. They stopped there, they had some food, they had a couple of drinks, they talked. They sat there for about an hour and then they decided, Kate, okay, that's it, you know what, let's start heading back towards camp. We'll get back to the trucks, it'll be almost dark by then. We'll make a fire and we'll just relax for the rest of the evening. So the three of them, they got on their rides and they started making their way back down this mountain, down this trail, back towards the trucks. When they were having lunch though, Trent did mention to Jason Tommy that he was having a very hard time keeping up that morning. So the three of them, they had come up with a plan for the return trip that Jace and Tommy would periodically stop and wait for Trent to catch up. Once they saw him catch up, they would continue off riding. And just like that morning, Trent was having a very hard time. He was having a very difficult time with this one section on the trail. It was incredibly rocky. And he actually almost tipped his quad on these rocks a couple of times. As he was going through these rocks, he was really questioning to himself like, you know, maybe I should not have come on this trip. Maybe I should have talked to the guys, seen if they would wait a week till my dirt bike was ready. But all in all, he was trying to keep his spirits up, trying to kind of just focus on the fact that he was out there to have a good time and just deal with all these obstacles as they came his way. He managed to get through this section of rock, got onto a little bit of a smoother part of the trail, ended up coming around a corner, saw Jason Tommy up ahead, they waved to each other, Jason Tommy took off, he started picking up speed, trying to catch up, and at this point he was thinking, okay, hopefully that was the worst of it. There were some difficult points this morning, but that portion of the trail was the absolute worst, so I'm in pretty good shape for the rest of this ride. About a half an hour later, they came to a section of the trail that was just completely bogged out. It was super muddy, super wet, and it really slowed their progress down. Jace and Tommy, they kept getting their dirt bikes stuck, and the three of them would have to grab onto the bikes, lift them out of the mud, try pulling them through, because they just could not get traction, and they just kept getting stuck. It was a lot more wet and a lot more muddy than when they came through that morning. So it took them a lot longer than expected to make it through this section and at this point they would not be getting back to camp before dark. A short while later Trent made his way around this right bend in the trail that led to this long straightaway. It was about 250 yards and at the end of the straightaway he could see that the trail turned to the right. And right where the trail started to turn he could see Jason Tommy. They turned around, they gave him a wave, he waved back saying, yeah I'm good you guys can keep going. And then he watched his two friends to make that turn and disappear behind the trees. Jace at this point just kept riding down that straightaway, looking to his left, looking to his right, taking in the scenery. On the left hand side of this trail it was very steep going down the side of this mountain, real thick vegetation. On the right it was going up, not quite as steep as on the left side, but he could periodically see through the vegetation, through the trees, little gaps and you can see little clearings and stuff. So he started to slow down just to take in the scenery a bit better. So he's making his way down the trail, looking right, looking left, when all of a sudden out of the corner of his eye, he catches some movement up on the right side in one of these clearings. At this point, Trent slowed his quad down. He's looking up into this clearing, trying to figure out what he might've just saw. When all of a sudden he sees this woman and she's wearing like an old gray kind of dress. He described it as looking like almost like a shipping blanket, like a moving blanket. Like it was like a real kind of dark gray, looked like a coarse material. And this lady was just absolutely filthy. So he slowed his quad down almost right to a crawl, looking into this clearing at this lady that's moving and darting in behind these different trees. At this point, he stopped, he's looking up towards her, he's debating if he should call out to see if she needs help. When all of a sudden, behind this woman, he sees two men wearing very similar clothing, very dark gray, looked like a rough material, and they too were just completely filthy. Trent sat there just looking up at these people, trying to make sense of 
who they were and why they were there. It did not make any sense to them whatsoever. They were miles upon miles away from absolutely anything. And it just did not make sense for somebody to be this far into the bush. He started to think, you know, did we come across an illegal grow up operation or something? And he started to realize that he was in a fairly dangerous situation at this point, but he had no way to communicate that to Jason Tommy. So at this point, he started to accelerate his quad. He figured he was just going to get out of there, link up with his buddies, and just leave whoever these people were alone, and hopefully they would not have any issues with them. So as he's accelerating his quad down the trail, he's looking up to his right, when all of a sudden he feels this massive impact right up against his head. He feels a strong blow right against his helmet, almost like somebody hit him with a baseball bat. He feels this blow and knocks him off his quad. He lands on his back on the ground. He's completely dazed, almost about to pass out. His vision's completely blurry. He's lying on the ground. He turns, looks to his right, and he sees these three men walking towards him. At this point, his vision started to narrow, and then he ended up completely passing out. He was just completely unconscious right in the middle of this trail with these three men walking up on him. Luckily for Trent, shortly after he got hit, after he passed out on the trail, Jace and Tommy were waiting just around that corner of the trail. So after a couple of minutes where they noticed that Trent had not caught up to them, they decided they were going to turn around and go make sure everything was okay. So Jace and Tommy, they turned their dirt bikes around, made their way up to that turn, turned the corner, and they could just see up ahead of them about 100 yards. They could see something on the ground with four people kind of gathered around them. They did not see Trent's quad. So they had no idea that this was Trent lying in the middle of the trail. But Jace and Tommy, they accelerated their dirt bikes, moved closer towards this crowd of people in the middle of the trail. Chase was leading the way. And as he got about 25, 30 yards away, he noticed that this was Trent lying on the ground and there were these four men trying to actually pick him up. He saw that two of them had his hands, two of them had his feet, and it was like they were about to pick him up and carry him away. Jace at this point pulled out his 45, fired a couple of shots into the air. These four men, they dropped Trent to the ground and they took off down the side of this mountain. Jace jumped off of his dirt bike, started running towards Trent on the ground, and all of a sudden this woman ran across the trail and down the side of the mountain as well. It would turn out that that woman that Jace saw was the same woman that Trent had seen a few minutes before. Jace and Tommy ran up to Trent. Tommy instantly dropped down, started taking Trent's helmet off of him. He noticed that the visor of the helmet was completely smashed. The helmet itself was cracked as well. He got the helmet off, notices that Trent is completely unconscious. So he starts slapping him in the face, shaking him, talking to him, telling him to wake up. The entire time, Jace is standing there with his weapon at the ready, looking into the bushes in case these people come back. After about 20 seconds of trying to wake up Trent, Trent finally starts to come to, so he's on his back, his eyes start to flutter, they start to open. He sees Tommy looking down at him, and he immediately asks what happened. Jace and Tommy told him they had no idea, just that they were waiting around the corner for him to show up. He didn't show up. They came around the corner. They saw four people trying to pick him up and carry him off the trail, and that Jace fired his weapon and the people took off. Trent at this point sits up. He's looking around, kind of getting his bearings. Then he asks him, where's my quad? Tommy at this point reaches down, grabs Trent's arm, helps him up, tells him, don't worry, buddy, we're going to find your quad. Then the three of them started looking around for any sign of it whatsoever. They noticed about 15 yards down the trail from where Trent was lying on the ground, they could see that the foliage on the left side was all flattened down, almost like something had gone through it. So the three of them start making their way towards that spot. Jace was up in the front, weapon ready, just in case. They get to it, they look, and they could see down the side of the mountain, all these small bushes all flattened. They could see pieces of Trent's quad just scattered everywhere. This thing was just completely totaled. There was no way that they were going to be able to salvage this thing at all. 
at this point they decided that they would just put trent on the back of tommy's dirt bike and they would get back towards where they had set up camp trent was in a fair bit of pain so it was very hard for him to get on the back of tommy's dirt bike but after a couple of tries, he managed to find a position that was not too uncomfortable and they made their ride back to the truck. Every bump that they would hit along the way though just shot tremors of pain through Trent's body. He knew and felt like nothing was broken, but he was hurting nonetheless. When they got to the trucks, they loaded the dirt bikes up, Tommy drove Trent's truck and the three of them made their way into Chattaloochee where they reported it to the authorities. They told the authorities exactly what had happened, where it had happened and they were told that an investigation would be launched and that they would hear back shortly after two weeks of not hearing anything back they followed up and basically the authorities told them you know you guys were drinking your buddy drank too much he drove his quad off the mountain case is closed trent ended up having an argument with the officer he was talking to and this officer was very stern with him that they were not going to launch any form of an investigation that that was their final conclusion trent believes that these feral people living in the smoky mountains could be responsible for some of the missing people for some of the murdered people in these parks so my question to you is what do you guys think of this situation do you think that these feral people could be responsible for some of these missing people for some of these murdered people in these parks please let me know in the comments below i'd really like to know your thoughts but as always thanks for joining us and if you haven't done so already the next time you're going off to go quadding through the appalachian mountains strap that subscribe button onto your quad and i'll see you next time